The year 1989 was a pretty big year for movies. Tim Burton's Batman, Steven Spielberg's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, as well as Ghostbusters 2 were all films to come out at the very end of the decade. A certain number of underwater horror movies were also pretty important for 1989, with Sean Cunningham's Deep Star 6, Roger Corman's Lords of the Deep, and James Cameron's The Abyss, all being released that very same year. That being said, you can imagine that with so many science fiction thrillers set underwater that they would eventually wind up competing with one another, which is one of the reasons today's movie sadly has been forgotten. George P. Cosmatos, the director of Rambo First Blood Part 2, filmed another one of those underwater monster movies called Leviathan. The film starred actors like Peter Weller from Robocop, Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters, and even Daniel Stern from Home Alone. Rambo veteran actor Richard Crana also shows up with a pretty solid set of characters that all do a pretty great job acting in a movie that also employed the special effects of the great Stan Winston, who has been involved in many of the movies that we've talked about on this channel so far. Now, Leviathan tells the story of an underwater mining operation stumbling upon a sunken Russian ship that has a secret monstrous experiment locked away for no one to be able to find. Geologist Stephen Beck has been put in charge to make sure that the mining operation goes smoothly, but after they discover the mysterious vessel, crazy things start to happen in their underwater base. Stan Winston's special effects creature this time around only shows up towards the very end of the movie, but all throughout the runtime, you get a really good amount of other creature effects for what is basically a genetic monster that starts growing and changing around the crew. Unfortunately, the main reason Leviathan has been forgotten is due to the fact that the film's box office was incredibly small in comparison to some of its competition that came out that year, with the movie apparently only making around $15 million, which, when you put it up against something like The Abyss, which made $90 million, it's not exactly good news. What you get with Leviathan, if you ever want to watch the movie though, happens to be some extremely intricate and detailed set design that I personally think sells the idea that these people really are living underwater in this claustrophobic environment. Some of the deep sea suits and gear that the team utilizes in the movie still holds up pretty well today and I genuinely think that most of the performances are genuine and easy to watch. There's a good feel of drama and suspense all around the movie in what is basically an underwater thriller set with some sort of genetic abomination slowly killing each member of the crew. There's really likable characters, really unlikable characters that get what's coming to them, and other stuff that happens that I personally think is just, it's very interesting to see a movie like this from 1989 that had it have been a hit, everyone would have known about by now. But you see, where the film starts to fall apart has to be the gigantic Achilles heel that is its story. And I can totally see why most people have never heard of this thing once the first act rolls around and you figure out where the screenwriters got their ideas from. Unfortunately, Leviathan is a very obvious retelling of more popular movies like Alien. In fact, the similarities to Alien are so obvious that I think it could really be difficult for someone to sit through this movie if they've already seen Ridley Scott's 1979 classic. The monster design and abilities are also kind of identical to John Carpenter's The Thing, which doesn't really help when the story comes to a close. I do think, though, that if you acknowledge some of these things up front and just watch the movie unfold naturally, that there is a lot to enjoy here. It's just a shame that, at many times, you get the sense that the filmmakers were just trying to cash in on the success of 1986's Aliens, which had just come out. Even securing Stan Winston for this role as creature designer makes a lot of sense when you consider that he just got done creating the Alien Queen robotic effects in that movie. So what do you get when you combine a lot of 1980s talents with the plot of Alien and the special effects king of Aliens? Well, you get this film, and that is not an understatement, by the way. What I think a lot of people miss whenever they go back and look for other people's opinions about movies is the fact that all of us watch movies all the time now and sometimes we can come across a movie that's not exactly good or not exactly terrible and it can be hard to really put into words what it's like to check it out if someone's never seen it before. A lot of people are very very dark and moody when it comes to stuff like this. Oh you should never recommend a movie that is obviously ripping off other stuff or you should only praise movies that are dark, ambitious, and
and Dark Knight-esque. Well, I'm here to tell you straight up, man, not every movie is even good. Most movies are baseline okay. Leviathan is clearly taking inspiration from a lot of things that you're gonna have seen before if you're a normal movie fan. That's just how it is. Does that make the whole film terrible? No. Absolutely not. It's got a lot of things going for it that I think don't go mentioned because nobody really talks about it. All in all, Leviathan isn't a film that I necessarily think deserves a lot of the really harsh criticism it's received over the years, although I will admit that it has its shortcomings. What I really think the movie does best is give audiences a fun story about an underwater mining operation falling under the attack of a Russian monster that has been genetically created to fight in the Cold War. What I think you need to be aware of, though, is that that, yeah, it's basically just alien underwater. Right on down to the suspicious doctor character that may just not be completely trusted, and the ones who survive, yeah, you'll probably figure that out early on too, but hey, these are all just my own thoughts about the subject matter. What do all of you guys think about 1989's Leviathan, and have you even seen this movie? It's pretty easy to find, and ironically, it got a Blu-ray release before The Abyss, so there's that too, but hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.